overload strategy is used, especially with teams that have a lot of skilled forwards. And the premise is that we've got support for the puck carrier, giving him two options, a player in an overload position and a player at the net. The beauty of the overload strategy is if you don't have anything off the rush, our puck carrier now has an option because our overload player will move to the boards, freeing up the play to the boards, but also possibly freeing up a lane to our defenseman who will move in. Also what it does, it really engages the defense. They have tough decisions to make on overload. Whether or not they come out and challenge that winger. And for the goaltender, these are difficult shots because goaltenders always have to adjust to depth and angle. And when you're using an overload strategy, that's one of the things that you can take advantage of. Crash the net offensive strategy is used for big, strong, physical teams. It ensures that we get the puck to the net and we end up with an outnumbering situation. Again, with our crash the net strategy, our puck carrier will take the puck wide, take his shot and drive and continue to the net. Our second player into the zone, whether it's the center or the winger, will drive hard to the net, end up at the far post. And our third player into the zone, again, either the center or the winger, will end up in the high slot. What we have is three players outnumbering at the net and three players looking for rebounds in the slot area. If we haven't gotten anything off the rush, a lot of times the puck will end up in the corner. With that, we'll still have our player in the slot and we'll have our net presence. We also will have defensemen available for those point shots. And the idea behind a crash the net strategy is to get pucks to the net, to be able to utilize the size and strength of the forwards to look for rebounds and to create havoc off of a high volume of shots. We now come to our behind the net strategy. And this is a strategy that's really geared towards teams that try to control the puck down low in the zone. Our puck carrier's goal is to maintain possession of the puck and control it down low in the offensive zone. As he heads behind the net, he's got the dangerous one-time shot right there. As he crosses behind the net, this activates our weak side defenseman into the high slot. And as he continues on, he'll have a real good angle for a one-timer in a very dangerous position. And the beauty of this system is defensively our overload forward can be in a position to cover up once he sees our defenseman on the weak side come in for that dangerous one-time shot. With our collapsing defensive coverage now, we're going to give away the low percentage shots from the outside. So our puck carrier has options wide. He may have an option back to the point. We're trying to take away anything from happening in the slot area or in the mid-ice area. By having our coverage with our wingers now, instead of being tight to the points, down deep in the slot area. And again, we're taking away all the chances in mid-ice. We're giving them the outside, chances to the outside, chances to the point, but we're taking away everything in mid-ice. On our staggered coverage, we still have strong confidence in our three-on-three -three coverage down low. The difference being, if the puck is on this side, we have tight point coverage on the puck side, but on the weak side, our forward will be in the high slot, helping out the defensive group down low. Tight on the puck side, staggered on the weak side. Now talking about our defensive strategies, and we're gonna start with tight point coverage. When we have three forwards in the offensive zone and our two defensemen, we try to eliminate point shots from teams that have very good offensive defensemen. So by doing this, we have Players right on the defenseman, up high. Down low, we've got two defensemen and a forward in coverage down there. And we're going to eliminate these point men from plays offensively. What we want from a shooting power play is good puck movements and lots of shots from the points that can be deflected and maybe capitalize on rebounds. We now want puck movement up here, the option to shoot or to pass across and shoot as well. We want the shots from the point because we've got 
a strong net presence with our two people in front of the net looking for tips and rebounds. And what it accomplishes is we end up with an outnumbering situation in front because as we get the point shot, we also have this forward now coming in to help out offensively. With our overload power play strategy, we're trying to take advantage of having more people on one side of the ice than the opposition penalty killing team. What we're trying to do is gain possession of the puck low. So we'll try and get the puck low. And now what we've got is options for this forward. He can hit this forward coming through for a one-timer. He can step out himself, hit this forward going to the far post through the slot area. He's got a pass back to the defenseman for a one-timer. And what we're doing is we're utilizing four guys on one side of the ice where we definitely will outnumber the defensive penalty killing team. With our umbrella power play strategy, we're trying to create one-timer shots. We now have a forward, a defense up high, and another defense down low. Now he's got the ability to throw it across for a one-timer or throw it back here for a one-timer. If the puck moves to this man, he now has the possibility to pass it back here for a one-timer or go across ice for a one-timer. What we're trying to do is get the goaltender moving side to side where the one-timer becomes more dangerous and we have two forwards again as a net presence for tips and rebounds. passive box we have collapsing coverage from our forwards and tight coverage from our defensemen we have all four defenders covering that high percentage shooting area where most of the good chances come from we give up the shots to the outside the point shots but we collapse down and we cover the slot area with our large box penalty killing strategy we now have our defenders out higher. We have a little bit more spread in our four defensive penalty killers. And wherever the puck is, we will have pressure in that area. If it moves there, that guy will pressure. If it moves down to here, we'll have pressure. And again, a little bit looser formation. We're forcing them to pass through the box and put pressure wherever that puck goes. With our diamond penalty killing strategy, we're trying now to have a strong net presence here. We have a good, strong defensive player in front of the net, but what we're trying to do is eliminate point shots from half boards and from up top. And we take away the one-time opportunities by having that good three-man high coverage. And because we've got the diamond formation, we can stop the point shots and the one-timers wherever the puck is. Oh. 